Amen. Want to once again welcome everyone to our service this good morning. Thank you. First thanks to God for just giving us an opportunity to worship even virtually. We're going to go ahead and get started with our service. Starting off will be Deacon Williams with our responsive reading. It is the entire 53rd Psalm followed by Evangelist Lube with the intercessory prayer and I will come back with the devotional prayer. Everyone, please stand wherever you are. Amen. Amen. Our responsive reading. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Corrupt are they and have done abominable iniquity. Uh, there is no none that doeth good. God look unto heaven upon the children of men to see them where they have the understanding that they have seen them. Every one of them is gone back. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. How the workers of iniquity know knowledge. We don't think of us to be dead. There were they in great fear, where no fear was. For God has scattered the bones of him that encamped us against thee. Thou hast put them to shame, because God has dispensed them. Amen. God's word for God's people. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another Sunday that you have allowed us to come into your sanctuary for worship. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches in glory. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your mercy and grace upon this congregation. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the multitudes that will come here after the restrictions. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that souls will flock into your kingdom for safety and salvation in this trying time. Father, in the name of Jesus, let the reaper angels gather those you have reserved for this church at this location. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless our pastor. Empower and anoint him afresh to bring your word with power. Father, thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, once again, we thank you for just you being God. We thank you for another Sunday in which we can gather to worship your name. We thank you for this technology in which you have given us in the midst of this pandemic to where your word can still go forth and people can still learn about you. We pray for those who don't know you. We pray that they get an encounter in which they can know you so that souls may be saved. We thank you for each person in this ministry. We thank you for the vision of this ministry. We ask that you meet each and every one of us at the point of our name. We ask that you hear our prayers, search our hearts, cleanse our hearts, cleanse our minds. Renew us, give us the right spirit. Just equip us, give us the tools that we need to operate in the gifts in which you have given us in our individual ministries and in this collective body in which you have placed us in. We just pray for the health of every person in this church. We pray for all the health for those watching. Pray for those who may later watch this video, who may share this video, that each person just be touched. And Lord, we know that you're just so good to us, that you've done so much for us, that we can never repay you for all of the things that you have done for us. And as we get ready to go into this service, we just pray that the Holy Spirit fill this place, fill the internet, fill everywhere in which your word go forth. And we're just so thankful for everything that you've done for us, everything that you're going to do for us, and everything that you're doing for us now. And we just ask that you just take all the credit, take all the honor, and take all the glory. This is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
It's now time for praise and worship. here is only two men making all this noise. Joyful noise unto the Lord, my friend. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be our God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Uncle Brother Brent, Nickham Williams, Evangelist Luwe, for the Sunday school this morning. It's thought provoking. the new normal. Amen. We need to be sensible. There's a reason why God put a brain in this head and in your head, not just my head. He sent some scientists amongst us to study some things to get the wisdom. So if they say stay home, stay home. Only come out when it's necessary. They put Paul in jail, but his word still went. The word of God is not in a person. You could put me in jail, just give me a mic. <laughs> give me a mic or give me a pen and a pencil. And the word of God will go forward. Because someday we're all going to lay down and never to get up again until Jesus returns. But the word of God is quick and powerful and it's sharper than a two-edged sword. There is... Uh, a word from heaven today in pursuit of the vision God gave you. We started with it. We broke a little bit for the uh, 
Mother's Day. We're going to continue today. But right now, wherever you are, before we even take up our tithes and our offering, I need you to leave both hands in your home, in your bedroom, wherever you are. Thank God that the coronavirus has not found its way into your house. Not because you are a smart scientist or you're a medical doctor, but because the greats support you. All you hear is news of people it has affected. You haven't seen it yourself. So thank him. Thank you, Father. Now, amen. 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 And amen. This is the time in our service where we take up your tithes and your offerings. I'm going to say some things to you. There are people watching that have never set foot in New Life of Harmony Ministry. I want to pray a prayer for those of you who keep sending your seed. They're not members, but they're out there. They tune into our services. You all know who you are. Father, bless them wherever they are. Meet them at the point of their needs and bless them as only you can. For it is only the obedient ones to your word that are blessed, not just here as receiving themselves. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have a lot to say today. Let me, <laughs> let, me, let, me let me pray. Those of you at home, if you all the money God gives you don't belong to you, they all belong to him. He said to return a portion so he knows you got it. The same God gives seed to the sower, but he will give bread to the eater. He eats the bread that he might die from hunger, but a seed sower never lacks. David said, I was young. <laughs> he said he has never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. This simple thing we do, don't look like much in obedience. Raise up whatever you have for the Lord this morning. Pray this prayer with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I return to you that this portion that is yours. Gratefully. In Jesus' name. Amen. We are 2109 North Church. Am I correct? They can get killed. They got killed. Okay. Our uh, cash app is NLE Ministries or PayPal or however you can get the money to us or any other ministry you'd like to show to. This is important, especially for us, especially for us. Nobody can hand you enough. Nobody has enough money to make you rich because they can take it back. But if you subscribe to God's prosperity, won't lack. Amen. Amen. Let us rise wherever we are for the congregation of song so I can do this thing he sent me to do this morning. Mm. Uncle Brother Branch is going to blow the socks off. I can't find the red mic to sing the solo so <laughs> I'll pass today. Amen.
Father and our God. How excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our life. We pray, Father, as we stand before your people, the ones that are online now and the ones that are going to watch later. Father, we pray for the unction upon this word right now. Be upon those that will watch much later. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you for the technology of internet. Thank you for recordings that repeat what has been said. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Right where you are, ask God to speak to you this morning. There's a word, the Bible says, there's a word for every season. The prophet said, put a word in my mouth for the one that needs help. For I have received of the Lord, which I will also deliver unto you. For it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save those that believe. Father, we thank you now for your word. We bless you that uh, you, your eyes go back and forth. Seeking for those that obey your word. Bless us as only you can. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. This morning, we are still on this, the power of vision series. Today, we are going to talk about in pursuit of vision from God. We had to get a vision from God. We had to validate it. Now we're going to pursue it. In Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, the Bible says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. He doesn't plow by reason of the cold, so in harvest time he has nothing. Now, in, in the Sunday school this morning, just permit me, I'm so excited to be standing before you this morning. In the Sunday school this morning, we alluded to God removing the children of Israel from the land he promised them. The reason for the removal is because he gave them instructions to leave the land follow every seventh year. Because God knows what he put in the earth to sustain man. So his covenant will he not break nor alter the thing that has come out of his mouth. Deacon Kale turn me down a little bit. So he says, my covenant will I not break nor alter what has come out of my mouth. So since he said the land will flow with milk and honey, for the milk to flow, for the honey to flow, there's got to be your participation. The participation is leave the land alone for seven years, for the seventh year. So it can start to produce in the eighth year. But they did not listen. So some people, like the evangelist said, a false prophet told them, you don't have to leave, God will protect you. God said, no, you're going to die in that, in that land because I don't want you there. Yeah, don't hear me. The vision was already cast. God is already spoken. And he gave them how to fulfill this vision. For the land to be pro... Man. <laughs> the sluggard who decided, yeah, I know people farm at this time, but it's too cold outside. So I'm not going outside. If you want to do it, you go ahead. 
forgetting that there's going to be a time for harvest. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. That vision God gave you, you are going to have the biggest church in the city. But you haven't left your house yet. Be careful. Success is not an accident to anyone. Nobody accidentally becomes a millionaire. Hear me now. Hear me. You might win $10 million in the lottery. Because you want it, you have no value for it. It will go through your fingers like it was a thousand dollars. You will actually end up owing more money than before you went. You won the ten million. Go read your history. Because that wealth, hmm, there's no shortcut to wealth. There's schemes out there. There's pyramid schemes. There's all kinds of schemes. Just do this and do this in two weeks or four weeks, in two years, in ten years, you have this. Unless you put a penny on top of a penny, you are not saving. <laughs> if you are waiting to hit the jackpot of life, it requires work. So how do we pursue this vision that God is giving us? We validate it that it's from God. God is not coming down from heaven to work on your vision for you. He gave it to you. Without great drive, great visions will lead to great frustration. Let me say it again. Without great drives, great visions will lead to great frustrations in life. Let me brag on God for a second. We got the word from God. Last year, April, and he tagged it the campus from Second Samuel seven ten and Exodus twenty three twenty. He called it the campus. Well, as far as we know, campus has several buildings. We didn't have two pennies to rub together, but we started making inquiries. Now we're here. Let me leave that story alone. Vision is a picture of the reality stemming from the word of God that steers you towards the exploit. Because he put the picture of a campus in our head, we started looking not for a building. We started looking for a campus. Don't have no bank, don't have no money, don't have that much money to even put down to buy a building, one building, talk less of a campus. But because it's his word and it's his resources, <laughs> Haggai 2 8 says, the, gold, the silver and gold belong to him. Psalm 24, verse 1 says, The earth and those that dwell in it, they belong to him. So, what is my business? He says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So what's my business? That's the vision he cast into this ministry, and we followed. But if you don't look for the campus, you will not find the campus. Vision gives direction to life. It ends guesswork and frustration. Now, now, visions are specific. So write this down. Four folds. They are specific, number one. He will tell you what to do. He told me to start the church. Start it now. Where? He told me where. When? He said now. How? First Kings 17, 8 and 9. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Instruction. What to do? Go there, dwell there. Behold, here's what's going to happen when you go where I send you. I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. 
So don't go begging. China help you. Don't go begging for everybody on the street. Because the brook dried up, the, the dirty birds start bringing you bread, so now I'm going to, this place is not very friendly. But he says it's a widow that's going, how do you command a widow who has no husband? But that's what God said, so when he saw the widow woman, he said, can I have some water please? The lady said, okay, I'll go get you some water. Oh, while you had it, uh, what do you have in your house? She said, I got a little oil and a little flour. I was just going to, I was picking up the sticks. I was going to make me a little something. Me and my son would eat that. That's the end of it. We'll die. So I'll tell you what you do. Make me a little biscuit first. From the little you have. Y'all don't hear me. <laughs> Go and give to God first from the little you have. So he told him what to do. Number two. Vision will tell you when to do it. The Bible says in Habakkuk 2, verse 3, the Bible says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. It doesn't speak at the beginning. And not lie. Though it tarry, hear me now, Wait for it because it will surely come, it will not tarry. The second tarry is it will not fail. So if God gave me a vision, I, man, He gave us a vision in this ministry. I'm going to put you in a campus. I saw the campus in my mind's eye, it didn't look like this. All I know is that He was sending more kids to the ministry than adults. We can't be in one building with the children. They can't learn that way, so it's got to be a campus. Even though we were in a one-room church with one bathroom, we never let go of the vision of a campus. So wait for it. Number three, he tells you where to do it. The only reason why you don't know where to do it is you didn't ask. When you ask, you didn't pay attention. When the instruction came to start a new life, he said, your name better not be in it. Yes, sir. Start the church now. Yes, sir. Where? He said, go to this location and pray, and I will tell you what will happen. I went to that location. He said, start it here. But he can only see maximum 34. He said, start it here. End of story. We started there. Well, you don't do it because of what you see. You kill your own vision. Because he said to start a church, I was looking for a church with a parking lot paved, big old building, been empty for three years waiting for me. Mm -mm. <laughs> it was in a building that was being used for something else. We had to repurpose it every Sunday to have church. So, in Genesis 12, let me hurry up. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, verse 1, so he tells you what, where to go, where to do that. He said, now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out of the, thy country, from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. He hadn't shown it to him yet. Look at what verse 7 said. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham, and said unto thy seed, will I give this land, and there builded he an altar unto the Lord, who appeared unto him. And I ask this question often. Wow, how do you think Abraham got to that land before God spoke? Mm -hmm. He was asking for instructions every step of the way. Even though you had the vision, he told you, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to put you in the land. I'm going to put you on the campus. If you don't ask him for directions, anything will do. I couldn't tell you how many churches we looked at before we ended up here. 
big churches, nice churches. But he said, no, that's not the place. That's not the place. That's not the place. That's not the place. Now, the place that is the place didn't look like a church. When Abraham got there, it didn't look like a land flowing with milk and honey. As a matter of fact, there was farming there. <laughs> he had to lie to go to Egypt to survive until they kicked him out. So he tells you where to go, but it might not look like where he's sending you. But that's where the, where the blessing is. Number four, he tells you how to do it. <laughs> Again, he said unto me, Ezekiel 37, verses 3 and 4. He says, prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God unto those bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. So he told the prophet what to say to the situation, because he was where God sent him. So God will tell you hmm, what to do, when to do it, where to do it at, how to do it. So how do I pursue this? What are the practical terms for me to pursue this vision? <laughs> Number one, rely fully on God. I could stop here and give you 20 scriptures about relying on God, but I'm just going to give you a couple. In John 15, verses 4 and 5, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So you, with all your giftings and all your talents, you can't go far without being in Christ. Except you abide in the vine, no more can ye except you abide in me. He said, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abided in me, now, now, <laughs> here, here's the qualifier. He that abided in me, and I in him. So it's not enough for you to abide in him. He has to abide in you. Well, don't tell me. How does he abide in you? You have to have a clean temple. The same bringeth forth much fruit. So until he's the fertilizer in you, you can't bear fruit. <laughs> if it's not in you, you are buried. You are an empty Christian, making noise. For without me, ye can do nothing. So be in him for the vision he sent you. If he says woe, let it be woe. When he says woe, don't say go, because everybody's clapping for you. In Proverbs 3, 5, the Bible says, trust in the Lord. Now with all thine heart, not the one that pumps blood, people. The heart in this scripture is the spirit that carries this body. Man is a triune being. I'm a spirit from God that lives in the body and I was given a soul to live on the earth. So when I die, my spirit goes back to God. That's my heart. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to your own understanding. If my understanding is from my book, a secular book, don't rely on it. Rely on the word that came from the Bible. Rely on God fully. Jeremiah 17. Thus said the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusted in man. Last week I told you don't follow man's counsel, right? 
This is how they do it when they start a church. They do this. They sell chicken dinners and do this. That's how they buy churches. That's not what we did. Because the vision didn't come from man. So you can't go and take advice from man to do the work of God. He said, cost is a man that trusted in man and make it pleasures and whose heart departed from the Lord. So my heart departs from the Lord. How does it depart? I no longer listen. Listen for, uh, for him to tell me what to do or for her and, and, and them to tell me what to do because they, they seem successful. Understand this. Visions are personal. Hmm. Visions are personal. The reason why it gets corrupted when you go referring to other people, they didn't give it to you. God gave it to you. He's the only one who could fulfill it in your life. So look at what he said. For he shall be like the heat in the desert and shall not see when good cometh. They shall inhabit the patched places in the wilderness in a salt and not inhabited. Salt land and not inhabited. Look at this, verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusted in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river I shall not see when it cometh. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. People are losing jobs. People are getting on unemployment. All kinds of calamities are going on around you. But you don't feel none of this. You don't feel the heat. You wondering why <laughs> you hear it, you see it, but I don't feel it. What is that? The blessings of the Lord. Rely on God for the vision that you're pursuing. Number two, the zeal of, of God. Zeal is what I subscribe to that I know as little as I know, he has commissioned me a pastor in New Life Empowerment Ministry. Hear me, someone. Not because of my education, not because of my knowledge of scriptures, not because I'm so great or my father was a pastor, my grandfather, my grandmother. No. By election of grace. So in order to walk in that unction, I need to get up every day and touch base with him because I've never been here before. Y'all don't hear me. The vision he gave you to get to some place you've never been there before. You don't know what you're supposed to do when you get there. So ask the one that gave you the vision. The zeal is I can't wait to find out what he's going to do with me today. Now look at this. Romans 10 2. The Bible says, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So the thing he has sent me to do, I need to find out what does this thing do? <laughs> what do I do with this thing? When I get there, what do I do? Who pays me? How, how do I handle money? <laughs> Let me submit to you, before we started this, I asked the Lord, who pays me? He took me to an Old Testament scripture. You say, you do this, you do this, and then you do this. Yes, sir. Then I had a problem when we first started. Seemed like I was lacking money. I went to God again. He said, look, you are doing it wrong. Whoa, I thought you told me what to do. He said, yes, I did tell you what to do. But the way you are doing it, you're doing it in piecemeal. You don't walk in piecemeal. Do it in bulk, and do what I told you to do, and everything will be fine. Be two and a half years now. It's not the quantity. It's the quality of your obedience. It's the quality of your zeal. What am I chasing? What knowledge am I acquiring? He wants me to be a pastor. Read books about pastors. The ones that have been successful in what they do. Watch them. Follow them. In Titus 2.14, the Bible says, Who gave himself for us? Hmm that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous 
of good works. It's a subscription, people. It's a subscription. Uh, Uncle Brother Branch here, he offers his talents to the church. Don't charge no money. As a matter of fact, sometimes if I give him an offer, I have to chase him down and threaten him. But here's what I'm about to tell you is not to make his head swell. He gladly packs up his piano and foot pedals and all kinds of gizmos and drags them into the church. <laughs> he drags them back home. And I said, can we buy this? He said, no, I don't mind doing this. Y'all don't understand. The zeal to serve God, knowing he owns this thing. I don't need to charge the church. I'm doing my ministry because God put this picture in my head. Man. Deacon Williams, we, have, we had a set of drones in the old place. He went and switched it out and put a more expensive one. No conversation. No conversation. The zeal of the Lord. See, you need to get in a place where he puts a vision in your head. You don't let anything or anybody stop you from chasing knowledge to do that thing he sent you to do. <laughs> Philippians 3.14. <laughs> I press towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So the vision is in the future. When you first see it, it scares you. But when you get a hold of it, validate it, and you hear the voice of God, and you start going towards it. Now, my focus, <laughs> as the pastor of this little church, if I may say so, my focus is for the campus that he put us in to take the effect where the kids are in their own building, being taught the word of God with freedom, that they could play outside without somebody being run over by a car. We've got a lot of property here, got a lot of lawn. No cars come near it. So I can, only see, I can all already see the kids of new life playing outside with no danger. So because of that picture in my head, I don't care what the contractors say. Get this place ready so they can come. Let me pray. Number three, be sensitive to the timing. <laughs> be sensitive to the timing of the vision God gave you. Ecclesiastes 3.1. The Bible says to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. That vision God gave you, he gave you what to do, where to do it. He also told you when to do it. But let me read a scripture to you. Hmm. In Joshua chapter 6, verses 15 and 16, and then I'm going to drop down to 20. They can kill is over there scrambling. And it came to pass on the seventh day. Now, 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 Moses was leading the children of Israel to the promised land. Jericho was a fortified city. The Bible says that the wall of Jericho was so wide that six chariots could run at the same time on top of it. So it was quite big. That was a highway for a wall. Amen. The Bible says, God told Joshua, lead them and march around this city once every day for six days. On the seventh day, let me read it. It says, and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day. Someday I'll teach you about the dawning of the day. And compass the city after the same manner seven times. That means they have done it before. They didn't say because we've done it before, let's just do it one time. No, they did it the way God said to do it on the seventh day. Look at this, look at this. Only on that day 
They compassed the city seven times, and it came to pass. At the seventh time, not the fifth, not the sixth, at the seventh time, now, now, watch this. The seventh time was not automatic. Jesus. He said, when the priests blew with the trumpets, prearranged, Joshua said unto the people, now you can shout. For the Lord had given you the city. <laughs> Verse 20 says, so the people shouted. When the priest blew with the trumpet and it came to pass, it doesn't come to pass unless the Lord says it. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down. Now, 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 this is a wide highway. So if it fell down, it would still be a highway. Hello? If I'm six chariots wide, if I fall down, I will still be a highway. So the wall did not fall down, the wall collapsed. The wall sank into the wall. The Bible says that every man straight before him, they walked into the city. So they had to walk on top of this wall that was at their level. Oh, you don't hear me. <laughs> when you follow the direction and the prompting of the Lord, even the obstacles will be lower to your level. be a walkover for you. Habakkuk chapter 2 as we close. Verse 3 says, the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. There is a time that God has set in eternity for you to do that which he called you into being in this world. Ask him for the time. Don't listen to what people think you should be doing. We miss it because we go and we let the pressures, we call them peer pressures. Mm -hmm. Well, do you know that down there, they come outside and do services at 11.30. Why can't we do what they do? Because we're not them. <laughs> we're not them, they're there, we are we. God knew they were there when he called us to be here. So leave them alone. Let's do what he told us to do. Can I help you? With 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 13 as we close. The Bible says, It came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering the bond offering, behold, Samuel came. I'll tell you the story as we close. Samuel was from childhood, Hannah, the mother, gave him to God by way of Eli and his sons in the temple. So Samuel grew up as a child in the house of God. So now he's a prophet, raised by God, sent to Israel to be a judge and a prophet. But they said, we need a king. God said, Samuel, they want a king. They didn't reject you. They rejected me. Here's what I'm going to have you do. Someone listen to me. A prophet is superior to the president of a country. He said the children of Israel, which are my people, they want a king. They rejected me, not you, Samuel. But to show you how much power I have invested in you, I need you to anoint Saul so he could become king over there. Samuel anointed king. Anointed Saul. He said, I'll be back to offer sacrifices in front of the people in seven days. So when the time came, Saul gathered the people. Samuel is supposed to be on his way. So Saul is sitting there, they are waiting, no Samuel. <laughs> they are waiting, no Samuel. The sacrifice is there, the king is there, which is Saul. The people are there. People started murmuring. 
Some people got mad and walked off. Saul panicked and said, bring me the offering. I'll make the offering myself. Hmm. I'm talking to someone who walks out of services before the benediction. <laughs> they took off. The words that were left there were mouthing off in front of Saul. Saul, because of his interest in his position, took the position of the prophet of God and offered the sacrifice. Immediately he got done, the prophet walked in the door. What is this you have done? Well, they were talking about me, and they were making fun of me because you were late. Some of them were leaving. I thought I was losing my popularity, so I had to do this thing that I wasn't supposed to do. That's the day Saul got fired from his job. God left him as king, but he was paying David in favor. Don't leave before your time. Don't jump ship when God is showing you the vision. Rise to your feet. As the musician plays softly, there is someone out there who has heard this sermon today about this vision. We'll conclude next week, the fifth Sunday. But you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior. The vision is for his children. Now you were born of a woman just like the rest of us. But there's a purpose for which you were born. And only God knows that purpose. So until you come back into him like we read from John, unless you abide in him and he abides in you, you can do nothing. There's nothing you can do. Unless you're born again, you can't do anything. So let me lead you in this prayer. You repeat after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today as a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. Make me a child of God. I believe you died for me and on the third day you rose again that I might be justified. I believe I'm born again. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're born again. Now, you're born again. You are now in the family of God. That means you are now have a right to approach God in prayer and he has a right to answer you as a child. Amen. Some of you need prayers this morning. I'm going to ask evangelists to come for altar call right now. Amen. Remembering all the churches right now, virtual churches, all the sick and the shutting. Remembering anybody else on our hearts. Father, we just love you. We thank you. We adore you. We magnify you. We give thanks to you, Father God, because you are good and your mercy endures forever. This is the day that you have made for us to rejoice and to be glad in. Father, we lift up every church right now that is beaming your gospel. Let the kingdom advance with teaching, preaching, and healing, Lord God. Lord, you are a great God. You reign, strength, and beauty in your sanctuary. You're clothed with honor and majesty. Lord, we worship you. You said as we seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, that all things will be added unto us. So, Father God, we thank you even right now that things are being added to us. We thank you. You said that the people perish for lack of vision, Lord God. Give us a vision, Lord God. For those who do not know yet what their purpose is, what their vision is, Lord, speak to them, Lord God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you even right now for the sick and the shutting. We thank you that you are Jehovah Rapha, Lord God. As we stretch forth our hands according to Acts 4 and 30, that signs and wonders may be done by the holy child Jesus. Heal them, Lord, and they shall be healed. Save them, Lord, they shall be saved. You, O oh Lord, are their praise, Lord God. We decree that they begin to prosper and be in good health, even as their soul prospers, Lord God. Bless this congregation. You said we should be careful for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication, we should make our requests known unto you. And so, Father God, God, we, we bring every request. You said if we touch and agree on anything, that if we ask anything according to your will, you, we know that you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, we can be confident that we have the petitions that we have desired. And so, Father God, we just thank you even right now. You said one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand to flight. So, Father God, we thank you even right now. Lord God, we speak and we curse coronavirus at its roots. 
In the name of Jesus, we thank you even right now that we overcome coronavirus by the blood of the Lamb. By the blood of Jesus, we thank you for the blood covering us. Lord, we decree a thing and it shall be established. We decree that we are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not beneath. We are lenders and not borrowers. We decree, Father God, that this is the beginning of a wonderful and a prosperous week. That the favor of God surround us as a shield, Lord God. That you establish us, Lord God, in this place to prosper us, Lord God. And we say thank you. To you belong all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, Lord God. We thank you for enlarging our territory this week. We thank you, Father God, that we call those things that be not as though they were. We thank you, Father God, that we walk by faith and not by sight this week in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, Father God, in Jesus' precious name we have prayed. No weapon formed against us this week shall prosper. And every tongue rising up against us in judgment is already condemned and proved to be in the wrong. But this is our heritage in the name of Jesus. And we just bless your holy name, Father God. To you belong all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. your neighbor wherever you are point to him surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life, all the days of your life. and you, you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever, the the Lord forever. point to yourself surely God's, God's goodness and mercy, and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, all the days of my life, and I, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Raise your right hand for benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and give you His peace. Now unto Him who has given us the vision, unto Him who has validated the vision He gave us, unto Him who has given us the zeal to pursue the vision, be the power, dominion, and majesty. Every heart said amen. Amen. And they may go in peace. Go in peace. Makes no difference. I said, I said, what I said. What you're going through. You're going to make it. God's going to see you through. Keep your head up. Put a smile on your face. It's another test. It won't last always. 